What is happening, y'all? Cowboy here, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at my strength build in Lords of the Fallen. Now, strength is very strong in this game. Our charged heavy attacks do immense damage, and we are able to put out just beefy, beefy hits on enemies. We have tons of poise. Uh, when you pull it all together, you have a package that is very, very satisfying. So we're going to show this off a little bit, and then we will dive into the build, give you an idea of exactly how it works. This is a late game area. I'm not going to do too much because obviously I don't want to spoil a ton of content for y'all. Uh, but just to give an idea of what the build is capable of. Dogs have an armored head, so I'm trying to break that before I rush them. A holy night action. And as you can see, we are just going through this area, absolutely bodying everything that looks at us. Doesn't matter. It's like enemies want to fight, we're going to fight. And it's not just all hammer. Let's say you wanted to work with a, a sword instead. We have our sword of skin and tooth. Really like this weapon. Much bigger swings on it. So I found this much better from a progression standpoint. This is actually what I play the majority of the game with. We'll, we'll go up a little bit ahead to kill another, uh, another big guy. These guys typically you need to worry. We got a nice one handed poke on it. And with the golf swing. Actually, I think I'm going to take off my shield real fast. This sword's a little bit heavier, so with those legs on, I gotta, gotta lower my weight a bit. You can see just the, the sheer amount of, of, of poise damage we do. We really are just kind of blasting our way through everything with these weapons. So, either way, let's jump back to the hub. We are going to, uh, I think I already put it on. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I've been targeted. I don't know what happens if I warp after I'm targeted. This might be... Uh, uh oh. Well, that's him. I don't. I don't know what happens. I guess I'm invisible. Man, this dude's gonna think I'm hacking him or something. Oh my god, I feel so bad. Coop, whoever you are, I'm sorry, bro. I'm so sorry. <laughs> he doesn't know what's happening. Oh, I feel bad. But this is funny to see. Well, hopefully that gets patched. Um, it still used up my moth. Is the moth going to go through now? Oh my god. That's... That's... All right. <laughs> <laughs> that felt really bad, um, but I've already started my intro, so I'm not redoing it. 
Uh, either way, let's jump to Skyrest. Let's talk about the build. We're going to also run through where to get some stuff for this build. Uh, but yeah, strength is, is super strong in this game, super fun. So to start, let's talk about the stats. Very straightforward. We have strength, we have endurance, we have vitality. Now, I started with a Warwolf class, and with that in particular, I'd suggest getting your Vitality up first because it is very low. Uh, but after that, we can start focusing Strength, and in particular, we want to get Strength up high enough to use our first real Strength weapon, the Faithful Bludgeon, and that is a threshold of 28. So in terms of leveling up, what I would suggest doing is probably get your Vitality up to around 20, uh, get your Endurance to around maybe 15, and then after that, get your strength up to 28 so you can use the faithful bludgeon and then from there it's just leveling those three depending on what you need if you feel low on stamina add a little bit more in endurance if you feel low on health add it into vitality if you're feeling good in those categories and you want more damage just keep upping that strength now strength has two real soft caps they're around 50 and 75 uh, we start to see less returns after 50 so if you want to use strength weapons that are hybridized stuff like justice here which requires 20 and radiance i'd still suggest getting your strength up to 50 with a strength build and then focusing on leveling up those auxiliary stats stuff like radiance stuff like inferno if you're using weapons that require scaling from those if you're using weapons that require just pure strength scaling such as the three we're going to be looking at in this video the uh the faithful bludgeon the sword of skin and tooth and then lastly, the Iron Wayfarer's Hammer, then you don't need to worry about those other stats, and instead you can focus on just going into strength. Uh, but as you level up, Vitality has a soft cap at 40 and 60. 40 feels pretty good. Once you get up to 40, you're at 800 health, which feels all right. Uh, getting it up to 60 boosts you up to a little bit over 1,000, if I remember correctly, so just a pinch more, uh, but at least getting that to 40 is important. Now, for Endurance, that has a similar stat cap where it soft caps at 40 and then once again at 60, but I don't really think you're going to need that much. I found 25 Endurance to be more than enough for a build like this. Uh, for quite a long time, I actually played with only 20 Endurance, and then I added a little bit extra into it just because I started doing more charged heavy attacks. And then strength, of course, is going to be our main dump stat. I would not suggest taking it past 75 because the damage returns tend to get pretty low past that point. Now, talking about the equipment, the first three weapons I want to talk about are, of course, the Faithful Bludgeoned, the Sword of Skin and Tooth, and then lastly, the Iron Wayfarer's Hammer. Now, the Faithful Bludgeon we can get super early in the game. We're going to show the exact location, but this is one of the first really nice strength scaling weapons. It requires 28 strength. This thing has the Grand Hammer type moveset, so uh, very similar to the other hammer we were using. It's basically very forward facing, but that hit ends up hitting multiple enemies because, as you can see there, it has a front hitbox and a back hitbox, which is going to be pretty good. The two-handed spin attack on this, if we use uh, R1 and, or excuse me, L1 and R2, is going to have a nice little follow-up like that. Uh, the one-handed version, a little spin and slam as well, a little bit quicker. So you do have a little bit of AoE in this option uh, if you're using those, those abilities, but this is a really nice early starter strength weapon. Like I said, I only got this up to plus five, uh, and by that point, I ended up finding the Sword of Skin and Tooth. Now, this is going to be what we're going to transition to after we find it. This is going to have slightly less physical damage than the Faithful Bludgeon, but it adds fire damage into the mix, and it has a 200 burn status on it, which is really going to be nice against bosses because we'll be able to proc that burn status and just add a little bit of extra damage over time. Now, the Grand Swords have a really nice moveset here. Very, very wide sweeps on the R1s, which makes it great for fighting off enemies in the Umbral Realm. The two-handed stance has really nice cross swings on it. Lots of forward momentum, so make sure you don't accidentally go off a cliff. A couple other things I like, the running R2 while one-handed, we have a golf swing, and then the running R2 while two-handed, we have a pancake chop. But all in all, the Grand Sword moveset is very solid, and the Sword of Skin and Tooth, we get this uh, middle of the game, it's roughly the third zone, but very, very solid weapon, and this actually carried me all the way through the end of the game. So once you get this weapon, you're basically set for the build. You can see it's only 36 strength requirements, so not all that much higher than what we have on Faithful Bludgeon, but once you get Sword of Skin and Tooth, you're almost set. This is potentially the best strength weapon in the game. If not, I would consider it the second best. Uh, just a very, very solid weapon when you consider the status effects and whatnot. But I do think it gets outclassed by one other choice, which we get very late in the game, the Iron Wayfarer's Hammer. Now this thing has an attack power over 1000 because it does physical and also does holy fire and wither. This is gonna have the same moveset as the other hammer, but 
it's going to weigh later. You can see this only weighs 35.2 compared to the uh, 41.3 on skin and teeth. And on top of that, with it being multi-damage, we, we are always going to have a slight damage advantage against enemies. So even if an enemy is resistant to holy, he's probably weak to fire. And if he's resistant to fire, he's probably weak to holy. So this actually ends up working very well. Split damage weapons like this aren't bad in this game at all. And this thing puts out a lot of damage because of that. Uh, on top of that, it's one of the only weapons, if not the only weapon, that actually gets up to S scaling and strength. Whereas we are going to be S or A plus here, even on the Justice, this only gets up to A plus. Iron Wayfarers goes all the way up to S. Now this might also get up to S. I didn't level it up all the way because by the time I had this to plus five, that's when I came into contact with Skin and Tooth. Uh, but those are the three weapons I would really suggest working with for a strength playthrough. Additionally, I really like having a light shield on. While we can certainly get the, the perfect block or the parry, whatever you want to call it with weapons, the window to execute that is going to be larger on a light shield. So if you can afford the weight, it's worth having a light shield on your back just to get those hits off on certain enemies and open them up to those big critical hits. As for your ranged, we have a couple different options here. The Trapper Crossbow we get fairly early in the game. Later on, we get the Multi-Shot Crossbow. Both of these are going to be strength scaling, but if you don't want to deal with bows, we have a couple of solid throwing options. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Enhanced Lump Hammer. The Lump Hammer in general is just going to deal very nice. As you can see, 937 attack power. Uh, the Bloody Hatchet's not too bad. It's also going to cost two compared to three, and it does come out pretty fast. Uh, but the Lump Hammer is my go-to for just bonking enemies. Besides that, I like the Accusing Spirit. You get this, I believe it was down in the depths, but I like to hit a boss with this pretty early on since it is going to reduce their output and increase the amount of damage they receive. Lots of good synergy with the build. And then of course I have a rock on for knocking objects out of trees. But if you want to go for throwing weapons, these are good solid choices. Alternatively, the Trapper Crossbow or Multi-Shot. And the other thing is you don't have to use these. Obviously, you know, you could go for Javelins or whatever you want. Javelins, Burrowers, Grenades, you know, whatever's going to tickle your fancy. Uh, but uh, for most of the game, I ended up working with the Crossbow. We have quite a few good bolts, Cinder Bolts, if you get early. These do a lot of damage up at 883. So some really nice options going the Crossbow route, even if it is a little bit heavier. Taking a look at the gear, this is mostly just fashion, but I really like the Scourge Sister Helm. Uh, the tankard gauntlets since those have thorns all over them and then skin stealer legs because the default on that Let me actually go into to some light here the, the default on those is red with a little bit of silver lining on them as you can see I think that looks really good, but early on we have different armor tanks So even if you're using something like these, you know, you could just go to armor tanked hit it with uh, hit it with a different armor tanked And then change them so it matches the armor get that red look uh, but in terms of, of the stats, none of, this, none of this gear is particularly important. Uh, I really like how the head looks, so if you're going to prioritize something, rock the Scourge Sister Helm because it looks like the dude from Blasphemous, and that's awesome, which we are going to be covering that later in November. Uh, Thankwood's Gauntlets obviously fit with that theme. And there's a couple different chest pieces that I went through. The Proselyte Garb, I think that looks really good with this. We have some nails sticking out of our character, uh, some good synergy there. And then uh, a bit later in the game, I ended up getting the Lord Armor, which I also think that looks good and has the bones on the chest. So I thought that fit very well with the theme we were going for. As for our other stuff, the Warrior's Claw, we can get this pretty early. It's actually right next to where we find the blacksmith. There is a door that we can open uh, right where we get the blacksmith. And to open that, you're going to need to have the, if I can find it, where's the key at? There it is, the Pilgrim's Perch Key, uh, which we buy from the merchant at the hub. Alternatively, if you progress far enough to where he just leaves, he'll leave you the Perch Key. But yeah, there's just a door next to the blacksmith. Open it up. There's going to be some pretty hard enemies in there. So if you're early on like I was, you might just want to run in and grab it. But this is just going to increase our physical damage and our physical defense. Very solid choice. As for the amulets, we went for stamina with mine owner's ring and then the ring of bones, increasing our maximum equipment load. Which you can see does help quite a bit. Now, unfortunately, I don't remember exactly where I got ring of bones. I want to say it was making my way down into the depths but I might not be right on that. I do remember the Mine Owner's Ring, however, and this is quite early, so we're gonna show where to get that. Uh, it's actually, it's basically right next to the windmill. Very early in the game, gonna be one of the first, first rings you find. Uh, as you are going from the windmill, there's a body hanging in the tree, like as you're progressing towards the hub, and you just shoot it out of the tree, that's gonna get you the ring. Uh, besides that, there's nothing really all that important with this build. 
you know, it's a strength build, so it just it smashes people. It uh, does it very, very well. So let's actually talk about where you find some of these weapons, in particular the Faithful Bludgeon as well as the Sword of Skin and Tooth. The last one, the Iron Wayfarer's Hammer, this you get incredibly late in the game, essentially as you're making your way to the final zone. Uh, it is a, a drop you get from a boss uh, along that path. So until you get all the way over there, you know, nothing to really be concerned about. But the Faithful Bludgeon, we can actually get really early, even in the uh, Let's Play series, which has already started going up. I have acquired this. I'm not using it yet, but I have acquired it. So let's talk about how we get over to it. Pretty easy to get. So early on, you're going to be going through the Pilgrim's Perch. It's one of the, the first areas of the game. Uh, as you make your way through the Pilgrim's Perch, after you get a, a vestige there, there is an alternative path you can take, which will go down. And that path eventually loops back to Skyrest, which is what you see me running backwards. So to kind of look at it, this is you know Skyrest, the start. You go through Pilgrim's Perch right there, and then you drop down, you fight all that stuff. But you can see there is a lower path there. If you take the ladder down, and you make your way across those platforms, you'll keep following that path, and eventually you'll come to an elevator. That elevator is going to bring you right up to here. After you get up to here, you just got to run on along. I actually got stuck trying to find this on the Let's Play. Uh, but make sure you are in Axiom. If you're not, you'll be able to transition out. There's a, a thing right there to exit. But what you're going to do is you want to be in Axiom. And then you want to use this to walk out onto the bridge until you are over this platform. And once you're over it, let go of your lamp drop down you'll grab that and then you are all set and that's going to be actually we'll just warp out that's going to be the first real strength weapon in the game that's going to carry you for quite a while now the next one is going to be skin and tooth and that's also kind of early to mid in the game but i'll show you all exactly where we find that one as well uh that will be over near the ale house now after you get through the early portion of the Pilgrim's Perch, you're going to make your way through the Fen, which is a swamp-like region, and then you're going to come to a Fiery-type region, and that Fiery region is where we want to be. So once you make your way through the first half of the Fire region, you'll make your way up here to the Ale House, and then from the Ale House, all we have to do is just roll on out, watch out for the mines, watch out for that guy. And we're just going to go straight this way, straight left, and you'll notice we have a door. This path is blocked off. Let's go ahead and open that up. And then you round the corner, and right here waiting for you will be the Sword of Skin and Tooth. Uh, which, once you get that, honestly, if, if you like Skin and Tooth, you could use that pretty much all the way up to the end of the game. Uh, I ended up killing the final boss with Skin and Tooth, so it is a very solid weapon. Definitely don't feel like you... You have to mix things up and go for the hammer, because you can, you can certainly use skin and tooth for everything if you want. Uh, but once you get access to the Wayfarer's Hammer, I do think that is a better choice just because of the split damage and the rune configuration on it. Which we actually didn't talk about rune configuration, so let me get over here and get back to the base. I'm running out of my, my warp mods, so I don't want to use all of them. Uh, but we are going to talk about the, the configuration stuff real fast here. as well as our shield and some choices patch pending. So typically you would have to go to the blacksmith uh, to do this, but I have it unlocked because I sided with Sparky. If you side with him, you get that. If you side with the blacksmith, you get a cool rune. Uh, but, so looking at the Sword of Skin and Tooth right now, I have two Ative on. Typically, you would want to have Ixion. Ixion is going to be better overall, it's just the pure physical damage. Uh, the Iron Wayfarer's Hammer has two round slots and then a wild card slot, and that's what makes this so insanely strong. You can put anything you want here. I ended up just slapping an extra Ixion on, uh, but if I had sided with the Blacksmith and I had her unique rune, I'd probably put that in here, uh, but three Ixion isn't bad. Now, what's nice about Skin and Tooth is we have two slots, and for a while I had double Ixion, and then I had the Tumul rune here. And so the Tumul gives us health back upon killing an enemy, which it's not going to be a ton of health, but it is quite nice. We'll show that off in just a second here. Uh, but having double double Ixion and then Tumul on, I found that to be very comfortable for progression, especially when you consider kind of the, the multi-sweeping attacks that come along with a weapon like this. 
uh, Faithful Bludgeon, similar fashion, we could put a uh, Nixian on, and then over here we could go for a Tumul so that we have two of those on. But those would be my suggested runes. As for the shield, right now I have maximum ammunition capacity, and I have item discovery rate. I would like to use stamina regeneration, but right now it does that. As long as you have it on, you can just kind of hear that indefinitely, uh, and I find that pretty annoying, so I don't keep that on. But if you're okay with that noise, slap that on, and then you can swap out your mine owner's ring for something else. If you're using skin and tooth, I actually like infernal devotion a lot here. Since we're already doing burn damage with skin and tooth, this is gonna also allow us to do ignite damage, which has obvious synergies with that weapon. That way we're getting ignite, burn, and then the bonus damage from fire. Uh, alternatively, we have some nice stuff like additional posture damage on the block, extra regen coming in. Uh, we could have the, the passive regen over time, like the Queen Vernus ring. So the only real ring you're going to need to get is uh, the, the Ring of Bones, which as I mentioned, I believe that's down in the depths, but I mean, I'll, I'll know for sure exactly where it's at once I, once I get all those walkthrough notes. Uh, but that's basically it for the build. There's not a, a whole lot you need to worry about with strength. You really just fight your way through. Just to show the uh, the health gain real fast, it's not a ton, but keep in mind that as we are progressing, you're going to be fighting past a lot of enemies, and especially if you're an Umbral, there's a lot of weaker enemies that you're going to fight against, and that's where this comes in so nicely. So, so there we go. So you can see my health is going up very, very small amounts, not a ton, uh, but like I said over time as you're fighting stuff and you're killing and you're killing and then you're killing some more i do think it adds up especially because these little the, the withered guys you know you'll fight them in groups of like three or four and so it does end up combining to a fairly significant amount of healing over time i think uh, but either way that is going to wrap things up for the strength build really really fun play style like i said definitely a, a very strong build capable of, of tackling pretty much anything the game's going to throw at you i took this all the way to the end, you know, cleared the final boss, cleared all that stuff. Uh, didn't have anything in particular that gave me trouble. If you want to go more defensive as well with a build like this, you could, of course, go a little bit heavier and run a... Uh, you could run one of the heavy shields and just focus on blocking and then follow up with like a solid one hand or something like pure billy mace and just basically stagger your way through enemies. Uh, in terms of leveling it beyond this, I do want to mention, obviously, strength, stop at 75, going any higher is going to be a waste. So here, it's either more endurance, or alternatively, you could take vitality up a little bit higher, just get that up so that you have a thousand health, but, you know, it's not really needed at that point. Uh, either way, though, that is going to wrap stuff up for the strength build. Really like this play style, especially because there are two weapons that are very strong for it, one that we can get early and one that we can get... Uh, you know, a little bit later with a little bit of progression. And like I said, sword and tooth, this will carry you all the way through the game. I actually finished the Let's Play using this. Uh, tried out a couple different stuff, tried out Justice. This required 20 Radiance. Uh, even with specking into that 20 Radiance, it wasn't able to compete with the Skin and Tooth. There's a different great sword you can get that's very similar to this, but it has a lot of bleed damage on it, but it has like a 29 Radiance requirement. So unfortunately I turned that one down. You can see my, my, my stuff is kind of empty here. I basically sold off any weapon that uh, didn't fit my my perfect unga bunga needs but either way we are going to wrap things up here if you were interested in strength i do think this is the play but either way thanks for coming by and watching uh, as for other build videos i'll probably do one from the walkthrough prep build and one from the walkthrough build uh, but other than that i mean i have limited respects and i've used most of them figuring out stat caps and testing stuff on this build already so don't expect another build video anytime soon but if you're interested in strength i got you covered so either way we're wrapping this one on up thanks for coming by and i'll catch you all later